when we came from Russia, first of all, I wear my masks like this sometimes. But then I saw that a lot of people, not all of people, like 95% wearing the masks over the nose all the time on the streets, on the cafe, and we have to wear it this way. Right, do it probably. It's a busy day in New York City. This guy was standing there selling some t-shirts and he was rapping. You know, Lana, you can make a... You can make a career as a as an American rapper. Have you thought about that? <laughs> Just start rhyming words, you know? Yesterday I had a BLT, I enjoyed it. This one's a, a turkey and Swiss. Okay, should be good. With passion fruit. Okay. Kombucha, passion fruit and tangerine. Okay. And some water. Okay. All right, I also decided to take this Italian sandwich. Let's do it. This is where we're staying. Uh, Mar Marriott, Fairfield Inn and Suites. Nice neighborhood. We gotta pick up our breakfast. Good morning. Instead of a buffet breakfast, they're giving us bags. And okay, there's a muffin. Well, yeah, no banana, okay. And then, yeah, you can take yogurt. And you can have some orange juice too. I remember at all the times that I was staying in New York, I would always pay like $200 for a hotel and this was a good price. Now, at this time we were able to get a room, a decent room in, uh, in Midtown for just $80 a night and I think it's wonderful. We are at the Port Authority, uh, taking a bus to go to New Jersey, and this is where we're gonna pick up the car. Lana? Yes. Okay, Lana proves that. I think so. All right, the bus just left, and we're uh, getting a lift to go to the auto dealership from where we need to be renting a car. All right, we have no idea where we are, somewhere in New Jersey. This is what it looks like. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> this is your birthday, right? Correct. Right, the way it works in Russia though, this is oh, the date. Two four. Yeah, two four. For you it's okay. different. So yeah. Go to his birthday then. So that's it. Oh good deal. Yeah, this the keys is the now. car right here. Right. The key is inside of it on the cup holder. Alright, that's okay. a new car. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Enjoy. Have fun. <laughs> Thank you. I love the color. Really? You ready to hit the road? Right. Let's do it. We just started our journey. First impressions about American roads. It's pretty wide, at least three lanes to one direction. It's pretty safe and convenient. And you have separate lanes to drugs for drugs. Uh, yes, I love it. It's not too scary <laughs> driving on the highway. passed a toll, uh, toll booth and I paid $16 in cash. They did not give me an easy pass, but they said it's okay. So, I don't know. I hope it's okay. But some toll booths do not have an option to pay in cash. So I wonder. So this is the car that we got. Looks impressive, right? Alright, now let's go meet Michael. Okay, and now we're about to meet Mike, who's the minister of this church. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? How are you doing? How are you? I want to get it on camera. Hi, Lena. How are you? Lena, I mean Lena. Our first stop outside of New York City. 
Okay, we can walk uh, in our shoes. I'm walking in my shoes and no one's saying anything. Oh my God, is it true? Shoes, right? In America, shoes all the time. Yeah, all right, yeah. My my son, he likes what? bare feet. <laughs> Alrighty. He is upstairs. Oh, the Battle of Stalingrad. Yeah. Okay. Oh, peace. So Mike's got some pictures of Russia. You yeah. guys probably recognize the places. All right, this one and a close up of that there one. There is one more in here. Okay. Just take a look. It's Novosibirsk. Novosibirsk. <laughs> Out of all places, Novosibirsk. <laughs> My friend, I, a, I stayed with their family in Novosibirsk. Oh, that's cool. Wonderful. And uh, the family uh, gave me this as a <laughs> right. going away present. Someone gets the St. Petersburg Cup. <laughs> it's very, very great. This Who's is, that lucky person? This is, uh, well, I probably. Lana. Lana. Okay. <laughs> we have to please the woman. Okay. Did you get the dessert? Yeah. It's a little gift from our heart from Russia. Oh, wow. Mike, this is for you. Oh, Probably you, see you, you already uh, tried this. It's like zephyr in chocolate. Oh, okay. I think I had these before in uh, St. Petersburg. Yeah, it is. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, it's from uh, this fabric from St. Petersburg, Neva. Ah, so oh, I okay. Yeah, Neva, so, Neva maybe the same kind. Spasiba, yeah. uh, <laughs> Mike, how did you get interested in Russia? So I was interested because um, I volunteered to be um, a teacher for uh, Russian speakers to learn English. And basically it was um, just a fun way for children in the camp in Novosibirsk, uh, just a fun way to teach them. Uh, we had to come up with our own curriculum. So what I did was I made, I got this huge map of USA. And then I know that children are interested, especially boys, they're interested in the hockey, in the professional hockey, professional football, professional baseball. So I cut out the symbols of each team. And so the game was, they had to find the city on the map that matched the symbol. So this way it would teach them, not just the USA, but it would teach them exactly where the city is, where it's located, the geography. And I think at the end of the class, the children knew more about geography than the children in USA know about <laughs> geography. <laughs> because geography is not taught in the schools, like hardly at all, unless you want to take it as a lecture. What was it like coming to Russia for the first time? It, it was really cool. It was kind of like, it, it was amazing because everyone was so friendly. I couldn't believe it. Like I, I had this preconceived notion, oh, they're going to think I'm, you know, a spy. What year was that? I'm going to think like nine, uh, 2010. Okay. So I found this camp uh, in Novosibirsk. So we had like 110 children and it was amazing. Like, so everyone was so friendly. I couldn't get it over it. <laughs> so we had to test each child. We had to test them individually, how much they, they remembered from school. And you said it, Slava, before when you were in school <laughs> trying to learn English, that basically the teacher was just putting in the time and like, oh, here, do the worksheet and goodbye. Like, so, <laughs> so I didn't want it to be like that. I wanted it to be like more personal. So it, you can imagine, Nova Zabirsk in the summertime and the classes are all outside, a lot of mosquitoes. So oh. mosquitoes, mosquitoes, like this, everyone is you know, slapping because of the mosquitoes. <laughs> so it's hard to concentrate. It's hard to teach. It's like, but still we made fun of everything. It was so much fun. So and then I went to St. Petersburg for uh, five more uh, summers after that. And uh, it was wonderful. And <laughs> the last time I had a class of 15 real estate agents from St. Petersburg in my class. The theme was your dream house. What would your dream house be? What would your dream house in it? Now, I can testify that Slava's uncle really? and aunt, that house that they have, that was the dream house that everyone was thinking of was that. And his dad- I'll tell him that. You tell him that. And so like this, oh yeah, it has as many rooms. It has game room, it has pool table. It has like the, the sauna, it has the, the, the hot pool, tub. Yeah. It has the dasha by the, by the lake. And you could get, you know, hot, get hot in the sauna and then jump into the cold water. And this was so important to them. Like they right. had to have all these, right. all these qualities. <laughs> My favorite of your videos is the one where you go snowmobiling with your uncle. It's, it's by far. The, it's a lot of fun. It's the greatest. I thought it was fun. It's the greatest yeah. video I've ever seen. Like it, it's so much fun. 
So people in Pennsylvania always complain about Jersey drivers. They're very impatient. They're always on your bumper. They're, they're really impatient. They're terrible. And the people in New Jersey are always complaining about New York drivers the same way. Oh, they're very impatient. They're always on your bumper. They're always beeping the horn. But I've driven in all three states, and I can truly say Pennsylvania drivers are the worst, <laughs> especially around Philadelphia. Like, they are the worst. I just learned the definition of a nanosecond. <laughs> yes, the nanosecond. It took the person behind us a nanosecond to start honking. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> this is true. <laughs> pravda, pravda. <laughs> pravda, pravda. <laughs> so Mike just said uh, he's got too much dust on his windshield, and I said, we brought it to you from Russia. <laughs> I said, большое спасибо. Okay. <laughs> so I wanted to film this new Corvette. Yes. All right, I love it. I got a question about living in Philly. So from what I know is Philly's got its reputation of being a, like a crime-ridden city. Yeah. How bad is it? Well, it's bad because uh, police are bad. It's bad because uh, the police chief's name is Outlaw. <laughs> like, if you want a police chief, would you pick someone <laughs> whose name is Outlaw? Right. Like, really, this is comical. But they, they don't, they wait for a phone call and after the, sh the shooting is already done, instead of going through the neighborhoods, you go through the neighborhoods and the, they see the police car and there's a deterrent not to do bad things. So without the police car going through the neighborhood, they can do whatever they want. So, you know, it's just really crazy the way things are. It's probably due to litigation against the police Maybe, maybe this is why everything has changed. But when I was growing up, we, we knew all the police that were in the neighborhood that came through the neighborhood. We knew them by name. They knew us. They knew the families. They knew the business. Miles, it it was so much better. Like now it's, it's just out of control. Out wow. of control. Now is that evenly distributed all over the city or is it concentrated in certain areas? No, it's just certain areas, but you know, there's always the possibility of the bad coming into the good, so right. you just have to be careful. What what type of violent crime is the most common? Is it uh, drive-by shootings? What is it? Yeah, it's mostly the shootings. Uh, you know, when there's a demonstration or something, there's looting that goes on. Okay. Where they're breaking into uh, businesses. To, are those still are those to, still happening? Uh, not as much. They've kind of stopped that for okay. now, but you never know. It could happen again. Right. It's just uh, try to keep yourself away from the bad areas. Right. Okay. Well, hopefully we'll sell safe because Mike knows the places not to go to, <laughs> and he'll tell yeah, us. We're good. <laughs> Mike, tell me about this arena. What's that? Okay, this is where the hockey the, and the basketball play, the Philadelphia Flyers, and also the Philadelphia 76ers. This is the football field where the Eagles, the Philadelphia Eagles play. It's Lincoln Stadium. Now we're going north on the 95. Soon we'll be where we have to turn. Exit third, exit. When, when you ask, when you ask everyone that travels and they come to Philadelphia, so right away they say, "Oh, where's Rocky Statue? Where's Rocky Steps? Where's the cheesesteak?" That's all they know about Philadelphia. But there's so much more here, a lot of beautiful museums, a lot of beautiful sites, and a lot of historic places. Like it's very interesting. But if you get away from Rocky, if you get away from cheesesteak, you'll have a good time. That's right. And you gotta say, "Yo." And you gotta say yo, hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, Lena, you yo. did well, you did well. You'll pass for local yeah. now. Yeah, in, maybe. In Brooklyn, it's forget about it. Forget here, about it. Forget about it. <laughs> but here it's yo. <laughs> oh, this is Washington Square. Okay. Well, now look, we fix that. So we're going to a neighborhood, what's it called? <laughs> the, this is called Queens Village. Queens Village, a very place, affluent neighborhood. This, uh, for Pete's sake, is a great restaurant. They have outdoor dining. The food is excellent here. Old church. Here's 
You got your order? Yeah. All right. It's good. You ready to eat? All right. Okay, really well. Still hold the food. You hungry, Lana? But I yeah. bet you're hungry. Mike said he bought a lot of water for Lana because yeah. she didn't couldn't find. She couldn't find the water. She couldn't in find New any City. in New York City. <laughs> well, there's plenty of water here. There's yeah. plenty of water here, Lana. Yeah, of course. And maybe hot tea. We, we, uh, can we make yeah, it hot tea? Yeah. Sure. We're Russians. Come on. Okay. Lana got herself so a cup of tea. Yeah, you put tea. what you want. Yeah. Okay. Thank Let's you. have Earl Grey, Lana. It's yeah, like this strong is, yeah, this morning is, tea. This is good. Okay. Let's have that. Lana, put your ice bucket. Look, uh -huh. Mike, put your I ice like bucket. Yeah, yeah. Plenty of ice. <laughs> How you doing? We got so much food, yes. and we're so hungry. Lena, watch out for those birds. They might be stealing your food. Really? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like Vika said, in Ocean City, New oh, Jersey. Yeah, it's true. Hey, yeah. Like, she I said was it was say, it like, was a thing, actually. Yeah, they, they wait for you. As soon as you buy the french fries, and you take one bite, they steal the whole thing. Oh my god, it's so huge, but Mike said it's, it's small. small. That's a small one. It's a small one. Okay. Wow. Oh, it looks so delicious and so tasty. Okay, let's Take try. a bite. Okay. Come on. Yeah, an appetite. Mm. You like it? Yeah. For sure. For sure, for sure. <laughs> Where's my Philly cheesesteak? Yeah. Lana well, at first thought we were talking about cheesecake. So she was all excited about having some dessert. In New York they have good cheesecake. Right. <laughs> but here they cheese have good steak. I'm hungry, so let's do it. A great tea at the seaport uh, Philadelphia on the Delaware River. Watching the Canadian geese. Watching Canadian geese. Watching. Mike's got a cool story to share. He wrote Maria Sharapova. So I wrote Maria Sharapova because she has a fan site that says uh, you can write to me, and if I like it, like I'll respond to you or whatever. So I wrote to her. And, like I saw your interview, uh, telling about your uh, growing up in Russia in the 1990s and like how difficult it was for your parents how many sacrifices they had to make so that you would uh, be great in tennis and I said this was awesome like uh, it's an awesome story to tell all children because they need to know how hard it is to be in, to be great they all want to be great right away but they have, need to know how hard it is to be great so I wrote her this net and she responded she said oh wonderful like and I also told her about fundraiser we're having at our church whereas like we're trying to uh, raise money for food for people that need food for clothing and um, so she writes me back she says how can I help and so I, I said to her well my idea would be to have a one-day clinic at uh, Radnor Racquet Club which is close to our church and to have a one day uh, tennis uh, school for children to teach them how, and everyone that signs up, the money would go for the benefit. So I know it would probably be hard logistically, but uh, if she could respond to this, it would be awesome. Thank you, Maria, for all your uh, attention and for all your care, and I look forward to your answer. Thank you. Spasiva, Pasiva. Spasiva. <laughs> We're here at the Philadelphia Museum of Art, the famous Rocky Steps from Rocky One, and wonderful works of art inside, much more famous than Rocky. Can I do, can I do 
That's a good exercise. The champion, you're holding my hand like. This part of town is called the Fairmount section, and it's a lovely part of town. I see a lot of people jogging. It's nice out here, peaceful. So Slava, I can see you have a new hoodie. Yeah, it is. Got a job at NASA. I wasn't going to make it too big. Don't want to sound it too big, which is something that I did, you know. I was studying planets. When I was young, I was always fascinated with different planets and all those are, you know, things orbiting. And Yuri Gagarin. And Yuri Gagarin too. <laughs> that alone, you know, got me qualified. You know? Being from the same country as Yuri Gagarin, they're like, oh, you're good. You're in. You're in. <laughs> So Mike said all this graffiti was not here just a year ago and now because of COVID not enough personnel to clean it up and the uh, place looked like it does. All this graffiti with all the valuable information on it. It's cool that you're at Golden Crown because I love that. I love that place. Yeah, you can eat all you want. Yeah. Well, now it's time to listen to some Russian music. Right, Lana? Right. Absolutely. But it's not, we uh, offer this option, it's, it's from Mike. It's some of Mike's favorites, so. <laughs> So we're we'll going to the chapel. Let's do it. The largest so, head was 200 largest people. The wedding was 200 people. Normally there's only maybe 20 people in here on a Sunday. It's a small, small chapel. But it has a history. You can see 90, we just celebrated 90 years, like three years ago. So now it's 93 years old. Pastor John Blair and his wife. Founded in 1929, May of 1929. This is what the building looked like over the years. Initially, it was in another building, then moved here, then from here to here to here to present. This gives you some pictures over the years. We save greeting cards for people in case they have a birthday or a wedding or whatever occasion. So you don't have to buy it in the store. <laughs> Here's where we have the drug recovery meetings here. Oh, drug recovery meetings. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's the seating for that. We have some uh, building material because we're building shelves downstairs. But it's called Narcotics Anonymous. NA. And if you can play drums, we have a drum set. We're waiting for a drummer. We have the drum, drum set, but no drummer yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the good beginning of a song, you know, right? Then you expect Please something more. Play us a zviri. But nothing more is coming, it's just the beginning. And that's how the song ends. Yeah, okay. <laughs> At least you know some part of the song. You know the ending. It's good. It's good. We have a library, all different kind of books, research, some research books, some some other books, some bikes. Our children want to ride bikes. This is all for Mother's Day. Yeah. A lot of milk too. Yeah, a lot of almond milk. Almond milk. Do you want to like it? Yeah. Yeah, so it's good. It's take. Oh, thank you. She so sent us the people. Yeah. Chicken uh, broth. Put it easy, right? Yeah. And but sometimes there's people that have a, a, a family, but uh, they have a, a lot of responsibility, like there's just too much uh, that they're responsible for. So if we can give them the food, then they don't have to spend the money on the food. They can spend the money on other things that they need. So it, it's not just for needy, it's also for families. 
No. Uh, what's going on <laughs> here? This is my best it's song. It's Mary Eileen. <laughs> All right. <Yeah. laughs> she usually has a recording, but today she does not have a recording it, it today. It covers a lot. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> right, girls. Hi. Thank you for That's a lot of clothes. That's awesome. That's a lot of clothes. People bring so. these clothes yeah, here. Yeah, they donate the clothes. And then yeah. these girls, they separate everything by size. Yeah. There's it's shoes. There's there's uh, coats, jackets, yeah. and all the baby items. All the good things that you do are because of Jesus living in you, because of your belief. So you believe this, then you have an indwelling of Jesus in you. It changes your whole outlook. It changes your whole attitude. You know, more and more, you care more about people instead of caring about yourself. So it's, that's what the gospel is. It's just meeting people where their needs are, and also sharing your faith so that they can be filled with everything that they need. Because Christ would go out of his way to help whoever he could help. You know, the, the, the multitude came to him, 5,000 people at one time. And he would touch all the ones who had leprosy, all the ones who, that had uh, some kind of infirmary. He would heal no matter, he, he, did not have, he did not have any more respect for one person than another person. He would help everyone. And so that's what we, we cannot be hateful. We cannot be uh, uh, racist or, or have hatred in our hearts any, any way. We have to always be open to be used by Almighty God to do good things. And he can do that if you believe in Jesus. Because when you believe in Jesus, he changes everything. So. And having a Thank great you. time in Philly. Yeah. Yes. You know. Great time with my friends, with Slava and Lena. Yeah. <laughs> Lana, or Lana, Lena. Lena. Everybody calls Lena. it Lana, though. Lana. It's okay, pretty it's close. Lena, right? Yes, Lana. Lena. 